Good morning, at home learners. Today we're going to start on linear perspective activity number one. Now we're going to cover some terminology, and the benefit of this video is you can stop it, back it up, rewatch it as many times as it takes for you to grasp the information and the concepts in this activity. I'm working on a standard 8.5 by 11 sheet of computer paper. You will need a standard 12 inch school ruler. A clear ruler is helpful when doing linear perspective because you can see through the ruler to your lines below. I would recommend a high quality white vinyl eraser and then a sharp standard pencil. I will be using red pen for this video so that the line work is easier for you to see at home but by no means are you required to do that at the house. So the first thing, this is our picture plane. And linear perspective, if you read the assignment, creates the illusion of depth on a three-dimensional surface because our paper has length and it has width or height, but it has no actual depth. So what we're trying to create is the illusion that this paper is deep. Now, in order to do that, the very first thing we need to establish is the horizon line. Now our paper is eight and a half tall, so half of eight and a half is four and one fourth. So I'm going to mark four and one fourth inches on each side of the paper. Now if you're unfamiliar with how to find a fourth, I would go to four, and then I'm going to count one, two, three. The fourth line after that is four and one fourth. Of course on this ruler, the zero is set back from the edge. Your zero may be here, okay, or it may be indeed set back. The reason I measured and marked on both sides of the paper is to ensure that I get a perfectly horizontal line, which brings us to our next terminology. This line will serve as our horizon. The purpose of the horizon line is simply to separate the sky from the ground, all right? Nothing more complex than that. If you were to look outside your window on any given day, you would notice that where the sky and the ground appears to meet, depending on the terrain, sometimes it would be a straight line. If you were in the mountains, it would be a more rugged line. But in any case, everything above the horizon, we will consider it the sky, and everything below, we will consider it the ground. Now, the next thing you have to have in order for linear perspective to work is you must have a vanishing point. The vanishing point is the point in space in which all lines that are receding, or that is going back into space, appear to converge. Now for our purposes, we want the vanishing point to be in the center of the paper. I've already stated that our paper is 11 inches long, so half of 11 is five and a half. I'm gonna put a small dot at five and a half inches, and I'm gonna label it VP, for vanishing point slash CP for center point because it is both the vanishing point we're going to use and the center point of our paper. So were we to draw an X from corner to corner, which we don't need to do, it would pass directly through this line. All right, so now we have a horizon, we have a vanishing point, and we're operating on our picture plane. So the next step, I'm gonna turn my ruler perfectly vertical and I'm going to measure up two inches. I want the ruler to be perpendicular to the horizon. When I measure up two inches, I'm gonna make a small mark, all right? Then I'm going to turn my ruler so that it is horizontal to the horizon and parallel with it, all right? So notice the edge of the ruler and the edge of the horizon are parallel to one another. Then I'm gonna draw a line half an inch to the left of my mark and half an inch to the right of my mark, all right? This is gonna give me a line with a total length of one inch. Now, the reason I've positioned it between the five and the six inch mark is because I'm going to use a very simple step of skipping an inch and drawing an inch to space out our three-dimensional forms. In this case, we're going to be drawing five cubes in three-dimensional space. So I'm going to skip from five to four inches, and I'm going to draw a line from four to three. I'll skip from three to two, 
and draw a line from 2 to 1. So as you can see, I have an inch of space followed by a 1 inch long line. I'm going to repeat this process on the other side. So again, I'm going to skip from 6 to 7, draw a line from 7 to 8. Skip from 8 to 9, draw a line from 9 to 10. So now I should have five 1 inch by 1 inch, I'm sorry, 1 by 1 lines that are an inch apart from one another. All right. These will serve as the base or the bottom of our five cubes. Now, since they're cubes or squares, we know that all sides are going to be equal. So my next step is I'm going to draw the vertical lines. So lines which are, again, perpendicular to the horizon. Not parallel, but perpendicular. So they're going up at a 90 degree angle. Notice how I'm using these three fingers to stabilize the ruler as I move across. Also notice that I'm making sure that the ruler is perfectly straight up and down. I don't want it to be pointed out to the left or pointed into the right, because either of those would give me either a parallelogram or a trapezoid. And remember, we're after cubes, so 90 degree angles, all sides being equal. Take your time as you do this. Again, remember, I'm drawing this in pen so that it's a little bit easier to see in the video. I would highly recommend that you draw very lightly. Most perspective drawing that we're gonna do is gonna have quite a bit of erasing. And if you make your marks really dark, they'll end up showing up through the final drawing. So now notice we have these U shapes. So it's one inch high, one inch over, one inch up. And again, each one is one inch apart. Now in order to complete this, and this is where having a clear ruler comes in very handy, I'm going to line up the top edge of all these marks and very carefully I'm going to draw my lines across completing the cubes. So now you should have five one inch by one inch squares, two inches above the horizon, and one inch apart from one another. So Here's where the perspective drawing comes in. Remember, we're trying to create the illusion of depth. And in order for there to be depth, things have to appear like they're going away from us. So think about a highway stretching into the distance, train tracks heading off towards the mountains. This is the illusion that we're trying to achieve. So we're going to start with the central box, <clears throat> and we're going to start with the lower corners, both the lower left and the lower right. Both of these will have lines going back to the vanishing point. Now, this is a critical step in any perspective drawing because these lines must go to the vanishing point. If they go anywhere else or should they miss the vanishing point, the illusion of perspective will be broken on the paper. So again, take your time, draw these lines very cautiously. When you're ready, we're going to move to the first box to the left. And again, we're going to engage the lower left, the lower right, and this time we're also going to include the upper right corner. By the way, the cubes that we're drawing, they are solid objects. They are not clear like a fish tank or hollow like a box. So we're going to assume that they are solid objects. Now, at this point, I'm going to switch my attention to the other side, to this box. And again, I'm going to repeat this process. So the lower right corner. Again, notice how I'm using my fingers to stabilize the ruler, and I'm lining up the corner and the vanishing point before I'm striking the line. And then to complete this one, I'll go from the upper left corner and again to my vanishing point. Now, don't be concerned if you draw over your label here. When I grade this, I'm just looking to make sure that you labeled it in the beginning. So you're already getting the idea of the illusion. So we're going to move to the outer boxes. Now this is a little bit different. So though you might feel like you know what the step is, if you jump ahead, you may make a mistake. So I'm going to take care of the lower lines first. So lower left corner, lower right corner. Now I want you to look carefully. Were I to line up the upper right corner with the vanishing point, notice how if I struck the line it would pass through this box. We don't want to do that. 
because I said earlier, they're not clear like a fish tank and they're not hollow like a cardboard box. So what I want to do is I want to line up the corner and I want to line up the vanishing point. I want to make sure that I'm holding my ruler stable and I'm just going to draw the line back until it touches the edge of that cube, giving the impression that this box is slightly in front of that box. And again, we're going to repeat this step on the other side. So again, I recommend you start with the bottom corners. So bottom right, bottom left. Very cautiously line up the vanishing point with the upper left corner and simply draw the line back until it touches the box beside it. So there you have five boxes in one point perspective two inches above the vanishing point. Now, as good as that looks, there are some things that could be better. One, logic tells us that most things don't go on forever back into space, receding. So what we're gonna do below the horizon is a variation on what we just did. Now again, I will remind you, you can stop the video, you can back it up at any time, you can re-listen to the instructions. So I'm going to replicate what we did in those first steps above the horizon. So I measured down two inches. I'm establishing, in this case, the top of my boxes because remember, these are technically in the sky. They're above the horizon. These will be firmly located on the ground. And I'm reestablishing the five cubes. Now, the space here must remain two inches, just like it was above. So be sure when you draw these, you don't flip your paper upside down, which is a tendency of some people. If you do that, your boxes will only be one inch away from the horizon and will crowd the image, which is not what we want to do. So again, I'm going very carefully, box by box, and making sure my lines are perfectly vertical. That means straight up and down and at a 90 degree angle to the horizon line. And again, the only reason I'm drawing in pen is for the benefit of the video. So you should be drawing lightly in pencil. And then I'm gonna close all of these off. All right. The next step or set of steps is much the same. <clears throat> I'm going to switch to a pencil for this because we're going to do some erasing here in a second. So I'm going to draw my lines going back to the vanishing point. This is going to create a mirror image with what we have above. So it'll be the same above as it is below when you're drawing. If it looks different, then something's gone wrong. You need to back up a step and evaluate what happened. Now I apologize for the speed of this video, but if I stretch it out too long, it becomes really difficult to upload for you to view. So I'm trying to keep the time down as much as possible. I realize I'm going pretty fast. But again, remember you have the video, so you have the benefit of being able to stop it, back it up, listening to what I said again. If you have questions, use the inbox in Canvas, and I'll try to answer your questions in a timely manner. All right, so here we have five boxes above the horizon, five boxes below the horizon, and they're all stretching on infinitely back to the vanishing point. Now, as I said before, that doesn't really give us a realistic picture of <clears throat> reality. Most things don't just go on forever. So notice this point right here that I used when I was laying out the lower boxes. From that point, I'm gonna measure up one inch and I'm gonna put a small mark. We're gonna use this mark to cut off the boxes so they will no longer stretch on forever. So again, I'm very carefully making sure my ruler is parallel to the horizon and I'm gonna draw a line across the top of each of these boxes. And again, this is the benefit of a clear ruler versus a wooden ruler. 
Now don't, you could just draw one solid line across there, but that's going to create more erasing for you and be much more problematic. All right. To finish the cutoff, I'm going to line up the end of the ruler with the horizon line. This is going to ensure that I get a 90 degree angle. You'll notice if I use the corner of my ruler, which is a 90 degree angle, I can check the box here and I can check the box back there as well. Those corner angles have to be 90 degrees. Again, it's one of those things, if they're not, then the illusion of perspective, which is a very tenuous illusion, is broken and it simply won't look correct. Now I'm going to take the time, again for the benefit of the video, and I'm going to darken some of my lines so they're a bit easier for you at home to see. Remember, you should be endeavoring to draw as light as possible to make your erasing as easy as possible. We're about to actually erase the back of these boxes. Remember, they're not clear like a fish tank and they're not hollow like a cardboard box. We are operating under the assumption that they are solid. So think like a brick. All right, once you've closed all the boxes in, take your eraser and very carefully erase these excess lines which you no longer need. that are stretching back to the vanishing point. Now we're gonna leave them above the horizon because we want to ultimately have five boxes that go on forever above the horizon and five boxes below the horizon that are cut off. Now, once you've finished activity one, you'll need to label it as such, activity one. Please put your name, the date which you complete the assignment, and your class period on the front of your paper. Remember, when you photograph, you're going to take two photographs, one of just the paper and another of the paper up by your face. This way I learn your faces and it's confirmation that you're holding the artwork in your hand. Again, if you have questions, direct those to the inbox. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.